Now, a survey released by the National Council of Applied Economic Research highlights that almost 85% of households in the Delhi NCR region saw their income being hit due to the nationwide lockdown. However, over 86% of the respondents support the lockdown being extended. This was a telephonic survey that was conducted between the 3rd and the 6th of April and covered 1,750 adults across the Delhi NCR region. The average duration of the interviews were around 11 minutes. Shantnu Pramanik, Senior Fellow at the NCAR and the Deputy Director of NCAR's Data Innovation Centre joins us. Uh, Dr. Pramanik, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV. This uh, survey was conducted before the news of the lockdown being extended to the 3rd of May came in. But even before that, uh, when you did the survey, there was support for the lockdown and even a two-week extension. Uh, lend some colour to what you picked up. Yeah, so you can say that people were mentally prepared for this lockdown. And in spite of facing challenges and difficulties, people actually supported lockdown wholeheartedly. I mean, by difficulties and challenges, as you already mentioned, that there is substantial income reduction for majority of the households. And at the same time, uh, there are, uh, uh, I mean, about 30% of the households experienced shortage in accessing essential items. So in spite of all these challenges, they still supported the lockdown. So probably the communication message was conveyed uh, properly so that they understood the importance of social distancing in, in reducing the transmission of the, of the disease. Yes, uh, that clearly seems to suggest that the communication on uh, the seriousness of the disease has, uh, has gone through and has been accepted by the majority. But, uh, you know, let me also ask you about uh, the segments that are now most vulnerable, what the survey shows up, uh, the salaried class probably a little more immune to the crisis at this point in time uh, from an economic perspective. Farmers actually the most immune at this point in time. Uh, what does the survey tell you about where the most pain is being felt? Yeah, I mean, that's a no-brainer. So it's the daily wage workers, right? So if there are no work uh, happening during lockdown, if they cannot go out to do work during lockdown, so they are going to earn their wages. And that is, and most of these uh, households or the uh, individuals, they don't have uh, a savings or a surplus so that they can survive on that. It's not the case. So, I mean, until and unless there is a safety net programs in place, it is be very difficult for these type of households to survive going forward. I mean, even if they can survive the disease, it would be very difficult for them to survive the economic uh, crisis they are facing right now. And as you said, that farmers are the least affected uh, now, but it, it may hamper uh, their wages and income as well going forward when the harvesting season uh, got over towards the end of April or May. I mean, then how they are able to distribute the produce, etc., would, would play a role in determining how they are affected. But right now, you are right, uh, is the farmer and the salaried workers, they are not that much affected. But uh, the casual workers, I mean, uh, daily wage workers, have been affected with very large extent. Seventy-four percent of the casual workers uh, said that their income was affected uh, to a large extent. So we had three options like uh, income affected very much, somewhat, and uh, not at all. So seventy-four percent said very much. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that is clearly where the pain point uh, uh, is. Uh, and of course, even as far as, uh, uh, you know, the farm income is concerned, uh, you're right. This is the situation as of today. But this is, uh, this is also something that the RBI has red flagged in terms of, uh, uh, you know, farm income being a problem. And uh, probably if this continues as is, we'll have to see how it plays out. But let me also ask you in terms of the economic reboot and restart, what is the expectation from the government, especially when you speak of the safety net? Yeah, so that's the key issue, I would say, because, I mean, in general, I would say the government has handled the situation quite well. And if you see the number of cases that we are seeing in India compared to other countries, at least uh, during till our survey, I mean, currently it has increased to some extent, but it is relatively low compared to most other countries we have seen. So it could be because the 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 disease came to india uh, at a later stage we are fortunate in that regard so we got the time to learn and prepare ourselves 
And at the same time, the lockdown was introduced at a much earlier stage so that from an epidemiological perspective, that's, that's a uh, major reason for, for, the, uh, for the cases to be lower in India. But at the same time, uh, so uh, uh, at the same time, it is true that this lockdown has impacted the livelihood of people. So, so that's how it is very important how government handles the situation by introducing different measures of safety nets, which can be in terms of uh, uh, direct uh, direct uh, cash transfer, which can be uh, in terms of distributing food and other essential items uh, to their uh, to the doorstep of the people who are mostly in need of. So these type of safety net programs, government really need to think of uh, if they want to manage the crisis uh, from a uh, uh, from a uh, uh, manage the crisis wholeheartedly. Yes, that, uh, that is where the needle now has to move to and we are uh, expecting more measures to be announced by the government, uh, especially in the context of the safety net that you speak of. Dr. Pramanik, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 to take us through the highlights of the NCAER survey on how the lockdown has impacted the income of how...